Well, hello again. This one is another sad occasion on the occasion of the death of my friend, Nick Turner, who was the Hawkwind founding member and saxophonist and flautist and vocalist, of course, not to mention songwriter the, in the original days. I've known Nick for a long time. I've got no idea where we first met because it's just one of those people that you just met and then every time you bumped into him, you, you already knew him and you just speak as if you had always known him. I suspect it was in late 70s again, but hard to say. I got to know him definitely when he played for me in his various bands, Inner City Uni, and Nick Turner All Stars. <laughs> played for me at the cricketers and other venues at that time and then when he got together space ritual which the, which to start with was called x hawkwind with an x at the front which caused a lot of problems for him with dave brock who had copyrighted the name hawkwind it's a bit of a long story nick once told me that hawkwind was originally a well they all the band members thought it was like a um, communal thing where everybody had an equal say, but little known to them, according to Nick, Dave Brock got the name copyrighted and then he decided he was the band leader and that's why he was able to hire people and fire people. But Nick never really got, got over that because Nick was always, I don't know, a totally free spirit. He's one of those people that, I mean, you just never knew what he was going to do or say. I mean, that was part of his, he was never nasty. I mean, it's not like some people I knew who you could, who you're scared of, who just go mad, mad. I mean, no names mentioned. He would just be eccentric, lovable to the point of, it's like herding cats. I mean, with Nick and with a lot of people in his various bands, getting them on stage on time and off stage on time was like, pretty hard, as they basically did what they felt like when they felt like it. Much to the consternation of the DJ, who at the 100 Club was the legendary boss Goodman, Google him, of Dingwall's fame, Nick would entertain a small section of the crowd after the show with a solo concert, usually the Pink Panther or something like that, which would go on for half an hour while the DJ was waiting to play his dance music at the end of the show. It was just, it was just Nick. And often I have, I would have the um, manager of the venue saying, um, do you think ask him to stop? Cause we got to close now and stuff like that. Which, brilliant. I mean, extra stuff. And also Nick turned up at funerals. He played his sax for people. He was a very communal, very friendly, very entertaining person who loved to entertain people. That's the thing. I think that was his main thing. He was just being Nick Turner, which is great. Well, Nick was born in 1940, which is like a long time ago. He was 82 when he died just a few days ago. His family were very theatrical, he once told me. And he moved to Margate when he was very young. And one of his um, summer jobs was to work on the Dodgems at Dreamland. At the time, for fairgrounds in the 1950s and 1960s were very loud. They played pop music incredibly loudly on the Dodgems and all the things. And he says he got into the music and it became part it became part of him at that time because he was like riding on the Dodgems and stuff. And he also met Robert Calvert, who was he was up, going to bring into Hawkwind at a later date. When he left school uh, and he served one term as a merchant navy sailor, didn't particularly like it, jumped ship apparently then travelled round working on fairs in Europe. And apparently he met Dave Brock in Holland, who was also doing the same thing. And they basically got together again when he came back. And at the time, Notting Hill Gate and Portable Road and all that was the big alternative music centre in, in, in the mid to late 1960s. And the band Hawkwind formed, and Nick at the time had a van. So they asked him to be their roadie, but he picked up playing flute and the saxophone, thought that adding a sax and a flute to, to the Hawkwind sound would make a great addition and separate them from all the other progressive rock bands at the time, which is definitely true. 
So Nick became a full-time member of the band and he became like an outrageous member of Hawkwind. And apparently he was um, very hard to control and he was sacked in, I think, 76. Same time as Wilco Johnson, actually, he's also just died. Sacked by his band in 1986 because he kept playing over the other members. <laughs> So there you go, that's Nick. So anyway, let's not go into Nick's history as a musician. He, he basically went back into Hawkwind for various things and left again. And then X Hawkwind, which had to change its name to Space Ritual, which included various other members, ex-members of Hawkwind. <laughs> And I was their agent for quite a long time in the 19, actually it was in the early 2000s. And so Nick and I had quite a lot to do with, with each other. And we knew each other as friends for quite a long time. And quite often recently, when I went to a funeral of somebody who died in, in music business, Nick would be there with his saxophone. I went to school, believe it or not, in actually Tenby, which is on the Pembrokeshire coast. And after I went, left to go to university, my parents, had a farm and they gave up the farm and went to live in Narbuth in the centre of Narbuth because my father went to work for the local brewery there. And Narbuth is a very strange place. It's very, it's right in West Wales and it's like one of the most, it's like Portobello Road transposed to there. It's got antique shops. Every, every coffee shop only sells organic stuff there's all health food shops everywhere and it's like a real buzz and a lot of people who moved down from london like nick did when he had a house at nottingham gate which he bought with his royalties from hawkwind and when he sold that he moved to near whitland and got this farm and apparently obviously you get a lot more for your money in west wales and this was the area around where tp valley is google it etc and so nick lived there so at Whenever I went to visit my parents, I would arrange to meet Nick in Narbuth. I actually once bumped into him in Narbuth, busking outside the Queen's Hall when we went for a coffee then. So, I mean, he was like, he was just a one-off guy. You would never, there would never be anyone else like Nick. He had a heart of gold. And then oddly, I moved to Ramsgate about 10 years ago and Nick came to Ramsgate. I saw him quite a lot. We spoke m mainly on the phone. Um, he would ring me up at various things and we'd have a chat. Um, and sadly now, Nick has gone. I must say, a lot of newspapers have done tributes to Nick, mentioned the fact he was called Thunder Rider. I I'm sure that they don't know, especially the BBC website and, and the Daily Mail and things like that, don't realise that the Thunder Rider comes from his farting, basically. I think he ate a lot of lentils, so make of that what you will. And once I remember him saying, when we were at the Cricketers, how he and his family ate his wife's placenta after the birth. Rest in peace, Nick Turner. We'll never see anybody like you. Good man. Goodbye, Nick. Thank you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe, and I'll do more like this. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>